I was holding my eyes open and I was in very much panic because I was blacked out and I thought I was blinded. He ended up letting loose like 12 of these things oh, in a shit. small area. They were running up to the tower and the guy was like, if you come up anymore, I'm gonna shoot you and domed them. My biggest thing that, you know, replays over and over and over and over is the insider attack, you know? And like, um, I know that's a big part of your story. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, uh, like being in an insider attack, it's not like a heroic thing, you know, you're in an, you're, you got attacked. You were in the open, you got attacked, you got hit with, you know, I got hit with rocket propelled grenades, you know, and, uh, and I didn't, I wasn't tracking that the guy that was up there in the tower was instead of being focused out like he normally is, that he turned all the weapons in on us in this little ass compound that's like the size of like a small parking lot, you know, like a Walgreens. And so, um, you know, uh, three days before that. So this is August 13th, 2012. So three days before that, three raiders had from a team close to us that was in my company and our command had gotten killed in an insider attack. Shit. Three days before, dude. And they were all close to us. And we were on a mission when we heard the medevac call. And we had to cancel the, like, we, we weren't going to stay out there overnight after hearing that, that there were three, those three guys got killed and there was one wounded. Like, uh, you know, that was like, and then we guys went back for the funeral from that. And so, like, that's all happening. There was a, a couple other raiders that had gotten killed, I think, in Kandahar and within that week. Um, and uh, so there's a lot going on and uh to and then on three days later on august 13th and we had just gotten a new so i lived in a little uh kind of like supply hub uh base you know and the main team lived at a different base that was like a click away like a kilometer you know through the green zone that's also filled with ied so it might take you a little longer to get there but it's it's there right and so for us, we're right next to the village, so that's what we were doing, a lot of the village engagement and, like, logistics and whatever else. So, uh, but just knowing that at this little thing, there's only three operators. There's an Army Infantry Squad, and there's the Army, and there's the Afghan Special Forces team, and the Terps. That's all we had. And so this other, t this other spot has, like, Army Squad... And the whole team and all the reinforcements and all the stuff. So there's only three of you guys over here. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, and there was a lot of there was a lot of our team was gone at that point because like we would do uh logistical runs sometimes to Camp Leatherneck, you know, to get ammo, supplies, whatever it is, come back. So we had guys that were gone. So we were like down. So uh so anyway. I get woken up in the morning and, uh, you know, I'm training, um, uh, every week I'm doing training classes and then I filled up my, how many guys I could have on my payroll. So then I had made a deal with the army SF team that basically you guys have more availability for on your roster. If we train this other guy to set up a checkpoint in his village can we put those 20 guys under your guys? When? Yes, solid. You know what I mean? Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. So we did that. We made that deal. We trained these guys, these Afghan guys, and then they didn't want to work for the SF guys because they trained with me or they trained with us. So their culture, they're like, no, you're our leader. You trained us. It's like, whoa, no, that wasn't our agreement. You know, like you're supposed to be with these guys. So there was this whole fallout with this guy that was supposed to work as an Afghan local police commander that wouldn't work for the Army SF guys. So I told him, I was basically telling him, like, dude, when he would come to the gate to talk to me and I would go out there, I'd be like, go away. Like, dude, because he refused to do 
we trained him and did everything. We had all the weapons. We had the, everything set up. And he's getting beat up by the Taliban in his village. Like, he's getting... All these things are happening. It's like, dude, the, now's the time. Like, you know. And, I, and so... He, so I got woken up this morning with this guy that's been coming, causing all these problems, like saying he's going to do this stuff, never fulfilled anything. So I get woken up at 7 a.m. I go out to the gate, you know, and I'm like, dude, go away. You know, it's always a story like, you know, whatever. I have with my t interpreter. This is during Ramadan and it's during uh, it's hot, dude. It's like. 130 like 100 plus degrees all day long and we just got a new arm uh, afghan special forces team so that's like the background of it you know a week ago so we just started training with these guys and from the looks of it we were calling them the force recon afghan sf team because they all had really long beards and they were like fighters where we got into some serious like situations with our last Afghan SF team and they did not look like fighters, but when it came down to it, they performed, you know? Yeah. But those guys that we had that relationship with that, that we went through those missions with and survived, they were gone. Now we had these new guys and all I had was just the experience of them training me with me and the Afghan local police. Cause they were like kind of the advisors helping to train them in a way. And it was a great experience so far with these guys. But little did I know, you know, that one of them was like, had it out with, you know, with whatever, with everyone, with them, with us, with the whole thing. And like, you know, decided to vote that morning and went up to the tower. You know, we have these three little security towers and we get attacked almost every day from the village. So like the towers are, you know, attacking TR, like target reference points and in bat, enemy positions in the village, right, mm -hmm. that are attacking us every day, um, pretty much. So you would it's hard to think psychologically. It was hard to think because that was like our security bubble, dude. You know that, like that little bubble was security. If you, it's not safe to walk outside in the daytime. It's not safe to expose yourself. But inside that little thing, especially if you're behind the wall, like you're not going to get hit, you know. And that you're safe in there. There's nothing inside that's going to get you. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that kind of is part of it where it's like psychologically when I was sitting there, because when I came back in, I, I went to the, we had a little kitchen that was right next to where the interpreters lived. And I got like a bowl of cereal and I sat down and I'm sitting at a picnic table, like wearing board shorts, you know, a tank top with like a Glock on my board shorts on a holster and my sunglasses are on top of my head and I'm sitting at a picnic table and I get rocked unconscious. Boom. <laughs> and next thing you know, I'm on the ground back here. That's right by the interpreter's living space. And I was like doing this weird thing where I was holding my eyes open and it was blacked out. And I was thinking that, cause I had this little Polaris that I would cruise around short spaces. Cause it's like, it's like, but I was, you know, and the Polaris was right next to the uh, um, picnic table. So for some reason, my first thought was that the Polaris exploded on me, you know, that it detonated. Yeah. Like an IED or something. And I was on the ground and uh, I was holding my eyes open and I was in very much panic because I was blacked out. And I thought I was blinded because my glasses were on my head. And I was like in a disparity, you know, um, but, uh, what, it's a weird series of events that happen, you know, um, because once I could see, I'm still on the ground, but then I start seeing like the Afghan special forces, uh, you know, uh, team chief, that's like the guy that's in charge with the officer, the team chief is like the leader from my experience so far. I see him drop a bag of RPGs and run away, you know. And then I see another guy run out and run out of the com of our compound in the daytime. That's like unheard of. One of the Afghan SF guys in an enemy village. You know, like, so that was all like kind of like, whoa. And then I got, um, and this guy had been shooting RPGs, 
you know, so the first RPG hit close to me, right? There's shrapnel in every part of this table. The everything was had shrapnel. There's RPG fins everywhere. Like he ended up letting loose like twelve of these things oh, in a shit. small area. So all of our stuff was destroyed, all of our tech equipment, our camera systems, all that shit's destroyed. And like it's like, whoa, everything's smoking, like and we're get and I thought we were locked in with mortars, dude. So I thought like we were under attack and it was the A team and I thought they had us like directly locked in with mortars and they were just dropping on us, you know. And I got into the interpreter hooch and like or the interpreter living space and they're all holding hands like this. And they're like and I'm have I'm real tight with all the with the interpreters, you know, and they're like, big problem, big problem. And they're all holding hands together. I'm like, damn dude, I gotta like this is gonna do me this is gonna do nobody any good to be in here. You know what I mean? I gotta get out, I gotta make moves. So I got to the operations center, which is just a little bunker covered with sandbags. And when I got in there, he's right on top. That was where the shooter was, dude. He's right in the security tower on top. So he starts hitting the operations center direct top down with RPGs. There's three of four of us inside of there. We're all rocked. Every time that that thing hit, there was one guy that was in the that was down under the desk, and there was three of us that were standing up, and we were rocked every single time. And uh, it was insane. And uh, it was a crazy. Uh, thing because there's enemy everywhere dude there's enemy in the village everywhere yeah there's aircraft on station that's spotting enemy everywhere there's uh and there's guys that ran out of the compound and it's like what's going on what's happening and then one of the army guys came over and said one of the army infantry guys said hey one of the <clears throat> one of the terps is up here and said that one of the afghan special forces guys has gone crazy in the tower and needs to get killed we're like, whoa. At least we know what's going on, you know what I mean? At least So up to this point you didn't realize this was an active shooter. No clue, dude. We didn't know it was wow. coming from inside at all. How much time has passed, do you think? I know I know you probably have no idea. Who knows, but... man? But like definitely five like I'd say five minutes maybe. Okay. I mean but he dude, like there's a lot happening, a lot of reloads and like a lot of RPGs and like a lot of like crazy things that are materializing in that five minutes. You know, there's a lot of like damage and stuff being done. And uh, so, um, you know, what ended up happening is we, uh, with like the, the guys that were there that were, you know, senior to me, that were Raiders that were in the, luckily in the operations center, like helped clear out the compound because we didn't know what was clear and what wasn't at that point. Now that we have an active shooter, who yeah. else is an active shooter? You don't know, so you have to clear everything like it's not safe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we clear out, we get up to the side, and then when we got to the back, all the Afghan Special Forces guys, these are like all the OG guys that I've been, that are like been so impressive to train with, with the long beards and everything, they're all handing their rifles like, we're done. Like, you guys take, you guys help. Because... Three of their team members were dead on the ground. This guy was killing them, shooting active shooter, killed their captain, you know? Like, because throughout this thing, people are, like, thinking... They had a couple of their guys thinking we were getting attacked from outside the village, so they initiated the battle drill, and they were running up to the tower, and the guy was like, if you come up anymore, I'm going to shoot you, and domed them. Boom. So now there's a guy shot in the head on the side of the stairs going up to the tower. Then now the captain try to get up on their living space to shoot his own guy once he realized what was going on. And as soon as he popped his head up, this guy domed him. So their captain got shot, killed, fell off. He's dead on the ground. And then another guy, same thing. So like, so that's why they were all, because all their guys got killed. And uh, they were like more, they were, you know. So uh, they actually were the ones, you know, to help. Like, we worked with them and got the situation done. But, dude. Hold on. How'd you get it done? That guy's up there in a semi-enclosed position shooting, like, over 10 RPGs. He's done himself. He smoked it. Like, that, that's, that whole post was on fire, dude. Like, he was, like, 
dying inside. He there's no way that guy wasn't dying. That the bl- the back blast of each of those RPGs, it's almost like doing it in a closed room. They were ballistic. It was a ballistic post that got shot every day. That was bulletproof. That didn't have air, like it wasn't like clear back blast area. Oh, okay. So he was shooting these rockets. He was he was blasting shooting from himself. an enclosed yes. room. Yes. Not even really a room. No, it's a it's an enclosed post. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking it was one of those towers where the, it was yeah. it was open. No, so it's like, dude, you could have shot a, a paintball gun at that guy at the end, and he probably would have died. You know, like that's nothing to you know. But he 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 offed himself by shooting all those rockets in that enclosed position, dudes. He was on fire. You know. Yeah. We called it Ghost Post after that. Um, but yeah, so that, you know, that insider attack thing, uh, I didn't, it was like a, a right after it happened. Cause, um, you know, I pass or I failed my mate, my exams afterwards. So I got flown out for concussions cause I had a loss of consciousness and whatever else. But a lot, of, a lot of people got, uh, TBIs on that with all those RPGs and stuff, a lot of people got rocked. So there was a lot of our team members that got, you know, flown out. But a couple of my team members took me over and like immediately afterwards and shown me the situation and like show me like the forensics kind of on it. Like, dude, look where you were sitting. Look at this. Look at like my tray, like my cereal, like look at all this stuff. There's shrapnel in every single thing, dude. Like, you know, like took a picture and like, like it was um, definitely something. But then after that, I was like, went, you know, got medevaced. And then, I mean, like I said, dude, our, uh, we had our exit, our executive officer in our company was back, lost both of his legs on the previous deployment and was back on that deployment, double amputee above the knee. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.